dear students today in this lecture we are going to discuss about theory of moving coil ballistic galvanometer this lecture is a continuation of your previous lecture in the previous lecture we discussed about torque acting on a current loop and preliminary things about galvanometer there i explained how moving coil galvanometer came from the concept of torque acting on a current loop so what is a moving coil galvanometer a moving coil galvanometer is a system where you have a current passed through a movable coil placed between poles of a powerful magnet so this coil swings under the action of a deflecting couple acting on it and the deflection is recorded either by a pointer in western type and by using deflection of a mirror in d arson well type suspended coil galvanometer so again coming back to this chart so we have moving coil galvanometer moving coil galvanometers are either western type or d arson well type in western type what you have you have a coil which is pivoted and the coil moves between the two pivots and the deflection of the coil is read by a pointer that moves on a circular scale so if you remember we showed such galvanometer this one and this one you have a coil you have a hair spring and hair spring is attached to the coil and the pointer is attached to the hair spring so when a deflection arrives due to current the pointer swings and it gives you record of the current which is passed through the galvanometer now this galvanometers either it is western type or d arson well type what is d arson well type in the arson well type you have a coil and the coil swings suspended coil and the swing is recorded by a mirror from a lamp and scale arrangement now you will see that these galvanometers are used either in dead bit ballistic critically damp or dead bit condition your western type galvanometer which we use is all the time under dead bit condition however the d arson well type can be used as ballistic condition used in critically damped condition used in damp dead bit condition also so let us explain these things before going to detail theory of moving coil ballistic galvanometer what is dead bit condition for western type galvanometer you will see that in western type galvanometer the coil deflects as current goes through it now if the coil performs any oscillatory motion before coming to rest from its deflected position that condition is highly undesirable in western type galvanometer suppose you are measuring something then if the coil produces an oscillatory motion about its deflected position before coming to rest it will create error as well as uncertainty in measurement so in western type galvanometers the system is designed in such a way that the coil is never allowed to produce any wavering of it about the deflected position before coming to rest such a situation is known as dead bit situation so the design of the western type galvanometer is made dead bit how will you make the design dead bit yes there is a way what way the simple thing is done in 
question type galvanometers is to wind the coil over a conducting frame so this is your coil and this coil is wound over a conducting frame when you wound over a conducting frame what happens is that when current goes through this coil then it experiences a torque but if the system that is suppose this pointer or this coil tries to make an oscillatory motion because of the presence of a conducting frame there will be induced current set up in the conducting frame as the coil tries to make that flickering motion and this is induced current is due to the magnetic field in which the coil is placed so these induced current as you know by Lange's law will oppose such wavering or oscillatory motion of the coil so by simply putting a conducting frame this problem is avoided that is the oscillatory behavior of the coil is avoided in this western type galvanometer so western type galvanometer is always used in dead bit condition next let us come to this d arson well type so in d arson well type it can be made to use in dead bit condition critically tamped condition and ballistic condition so first of all let me tell you what is dead bit condition i as i already explained in western type in dead bit condition the corresponding motion of the coil will be such that once deflected it will come to rest without performing any oscillations about its deflected position such a condition is also known as a periodic condition so your spot in the lamp scale arrangement of this type of suspended the arson well type galvanometer will quickly will come to rest just after deflection then what is critically damped condition critically damped condition is again a dead bit type of situation the difference lies is that here the galvanometer resistance plus resistance of the circuit that is the galvanometer resistance let me show you in this diagram so that will help you to understand better so you have a galvanometer and the resistance of the circuit this is the resistance of the circuit this is your galvanometer this is the resistance of the circuit this together i call it capital r so if this resistance of this circuit as well as the galvanometer if this total resistance is equal to a particular value of resistance known as critically damped resistance then the system will be called critically damped galvanometer in critically damped situation your coil once deflected will again come back to its rest position in the least possible time so in that bit also it will come to rest but here the time will not be less but in critically damped condition it will be coming back to its original position in least 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 time so in both these cases to make them dead bit or critically damped the simple thing is that the coil should be wound over a conducting frame so that the induced emf oppose the 
wavering motion of the coil. Next comes the ballistic condition. So what is ballistic condition? In ballistic condition, we have the system operating in exactly opposite way to this deadbeat one. In ballistic situation, the coil of this galvanometer, this is suspended coil, will produce an oscillatory motion before coming to rest once it is deflected. Now the question is why should it perform oscillatory motion before coming to rest? Because your ballistic galvanometers are mainly designed for measuring charges produced by transient currents. When you take a capacitor and discharge it through a resistor, then these systems produce small transient currents in the circuit. Similarly, when you take a capacitor and you charge it through a resistor, you get transient currents. So for such a system of recording transient current, transient current, in fact not current, it is the charge produced during that transient current, this ballistic galvanometer measures. So the coil of the ballistic galvanometer under such situation should move after whole of the charge has passed. That is, it should not start moving before your charge has been delivered. So in order to achieve that, the condition of ballistic galvanometer are just opposite of dead bit galvanometer. So I'm going to this one so that you can understand better. Let us show you. So what are the situation to use a ballistic galvanometer? So you will see that it is designed for measuring total quantity of electricity or charge that passes through it due to a transient current. When such a transient current passes through the galvanometer, the coil experiences an impulse, angular impulse, and begins to perform angular oscillations about its axis. The maximum deflection obtained is proportional to the total charge that passes through the galvanometer. So this is the way where a moving coil ballistic galvanometer works. That is, you have a moving coil galvanometer here. When it is under ballistic condition, then this is how it is used. That is how it performs measurement. Now, let us see the requirements for a moving coil galvanometer to be ballistic. So what are the requirements? First of all, to measure charge that passes for a short duration, the transient currents, they come in very short duration. So the coil is required to get deflected under the action of the impulse imported by that transient current. So the coil has to be light weight. The coil has to be light weight. Again, the motion of the coil should not be damped. That is, uh, the damping which we were looking for in the dead bit type galvanometer, it should be avoided here. So the coil is owned over non-metallic frame made of bamboo or ebonite. What is ebonite? Ebonite is hard rubber. Then, so next another thing is important that is your in order to measure the total charge the whole transient current should go through the coil before the coil starts moving from its position of rest so how will you achieve this to achieve this the time period of oscillation of the coil should be made fairly large again how should I make the time period of oscillation of the coil large. So this is achieved by 
making moment of inertia of the coil large and the torsional constant that is the torsional couple per unit twist of the suspension fiber small i can show you that the expression is something like t equals to 2 pi root over capital i by c so this is the expression for time period of the coil in the magnetic field so it is very much clear that if i make i large and c small i will make the time period large and if i make time period large it will not move until whole charge of this transient current has gone through the coil so it should be clear from it then to make that happen that torsional couple per unit twist of the suspension fiber small the suspension is made of thin rectangular strip of phosphor bond wire so i showed you construction in the last lecture so i am not going to detail of the construction of the ballistic galvanometer so quickly rewind i will tell you is that i told you about moving coil galvanometer i told you about western type dead bit condition the arson well type a periodic condition critically damped condition and ballistic condition here i would like to add that this ballistic galvanometer which you use in the laboratory although it is written as ballistic galvanometer you can use it as dead bit you can use it as critically damped or you can use it as ballistic the whole thing depends on how you arrange the resistances of the circuit so this thing we will discuss in a later class that is depending upon the circuit parameter you will be able to use it in all the three situations so it is but however its name is ballistic galvanometer it's a d arson type galvanometer with a suspended coil so now i am going to move to theory of this ballistic galvanometer the theory means here we are going to simply tell how charge is related to the deflection so we are going to derive an expression which will link charge passing through ballistic galvanometer to the deflection object in this lamp scale arrangement so here you have a coil and mirror attached to that phosphor bronze wire and with respect to this figure we are going to derive the expression for charge as linked with the deflection in the scale so this is the system you have a lamp here this is the mirror there and the spot undergoes an oscillatory motion at normal position it is here under no charge flow in the galvanometer once charge flows then it produces an oscillatory motion on this scale and that can be recorded so let us move to the theory part so suppose capital n is the number of turns of the coil capital a is the area of the coil and b is the magnitude of uniform magnetic field produced by the pole pieces of the horseshoe magnet they may be cylindrical or any other shape cylindrical is preferred that also i told why the radial field condition next so suppose charge passes through this galvanometer so the passes of charge through this galvanometer is equivalent to passes of a varying current for a short interval of time so let 
small i be the current in the coil at any instant i would like to tell you is that here i am using a small letter i for current in the previous lecture i was using capital i so you try to adjust with that symbol because here if i use capital i the capital i symbol is used in this condition for moment of inertia that is why we have avoided capital i symbol for current in this particular lecture so here capital i is the current which passes through the coil at any instant because we have a varying current that is why we have taken at any instant and the coil will experience a couple i mean torque due to the horizontal and oppositely directed equal forces acting on the vertical side how this torque comes it was also explained in last class so the moment of this couple which we also known as torque is simply torque equals to n i b a now we will see that the torque which acts for a small interval of time dt this will give you an impulse and the impulse is torque multiplied by time and it will be ni ba multiplied by dt okay so this is very simple in angular impulse is the product of torque multiplied by the time for which it acts so ni ba dt suppose t is the total time for which current flows through the coil because it is transient so it flows from a time interval 0 to t so total angular impulse if you want to calculate simply integrate 0 to t and vi dt and integration dt integration dt over the interval 0 to t integration i dt in fact integration this i dt will give you charge so over the interval so q is the total charge which has flown over the interval 0 to t okay simple so already explanation is there now when this impulse goes to the coil what will happen to the coil this impulse produces angular momentum in the coil which rotates until the restoring couple of the suspension fiber brings it to rest the coil then swings back to its rest position as the suspension unwinds and due to its inertia overshoots and twists the suspension in the opposite direction all these are like your simple harmonic motion if you remember that oscillation of a loaded spring oscillations of a torsional torsional mm, tor, os, os, oscillations of your um, moment of inertia systems where you produce torsional oscillations so all these are incorporated in this description so a series of back and forth angular oscillation will be produced the amplitude of oscillation will keep decreasing with time due to the damp forces present in the system now let us assume that the coil begins to oscillate after the impulse is over so you have designed this system in such a way that the coil begins to oscillate after the impulse is over suppose omega be the angular velocity at the start and capital i be its moment of inertia about the axis of suspension then angular momentum important in the coil due to the angular impulse will be i into omega you know that capital l equals to i omega so i is the moment of inertia multiplied by the omega which is your angular velocity at the start of the oscillatory motion so this i omega which is your angular momentum produced due to the angular impulse i equate it to the angular 
total angular impulse so total angular impulse is n v a q and that is equals to i omega so how can i equate you know that force is equal to sorry impulse is equal to impulse is equal to f into t so here your this angular momentum is equal to the impulse impulse is changing angular momentum so nvaq is the changing angular momentum and that is equated to i omega that is your angular momentum now the coil possesses a kinetic energy half i omega square at the start because as the oscillation oscillation start you have omega is the angular velocity and i is the moment of inertia so half i omega square is the rotational kinetic energy at the beginning if the damping is absent then this energy is entirely used for doing work in the suspension fiber so the entire kinetic energy which comes due to the impulse is used in twisting the suspension fiber so we assume that c is the restoring couple per unit twist also known as torsional rigidity and the couple for a twist theta in that case is coming out to be c theta this one so this is your c theta and this c theta is the torque or couple for a twist theta tau equals to c theta you can say the work done for an additional twist we can call it c theta d theta that is tau d theta if the maximum twist is theta naught then the work required is given by this expression so as the coil start swinging due to this angular impulse it twists twists the suspension fiber so suspension fiber initially has no twist zero and it final twist is theta naught so what is the work done for twisting the suspension fiber from zero to theta naught that is given by integrating this expression this is your torque and this is your d theta integration tau d theta type expression this one and here zero to theta naught so it will be half c theta naught square on integration now you see that this work done should be equal to the kinetic energy of the coil at the start by simply work energy theorem so half i omega square this one was the kinetic energy provided to the coil by the impulse and it is equal to the kinetic energy which has gone to the suspension fiber in the form of work that is half c theta naught square so i omega square equals to c theta naught square and you will see next is that you have time period of the oscillation of the coil expression t equals to 2 pi root over i by c which i was talking in the middle of my lecture so t equals to 2 pi root over i by c you rearrange you will get i equals to t square c by 4 pi square you have this equation as 3 this equation as 4 so when you multiply equation 3 and 4 you will get i square omega square t square c square theta square by 4 pi square taking positive square root on both sides you will get i omega t c theta naught by 2 pi
so this is very simple some books they do other way but this is easier to reproduce i think by multiplication of i omega square and i 3 and 4 so you get an expression like this very simple mathematics when you compare 2 and 5 where is our 2 2 is this i omega equals to n b a q and you take equation 5 equation 5 is t c theta naught by 2 pi so you are equating the value of that angular momentum multiplied uh, e equal to this tc theta naught by 2 pi so you get an expression rearranging in terms of q which is t by 2 pi c by nva theta naught that is your q is equal to some k into theta naught what is k k is t by 2 pi c by nva so this quantity that is t is the time period of oscillation capital n is your total number of turns capital b is the magnetic field a is the area of the coil and c is your restoring couple per unit twist so these things are fixed for a galvanometer so all this together constitutes a constant k and it has a special name this is known as ballistic ballistic constant this part so this equation can also be rewritten as q s equals to q by theta naught so net k is equal to t by 2 pi into c by nv this qs is also known as charge sensitivity of the ballistic galvanometer so equation 7 represents a link rather your 6 represents a link between charge which has passed through a ballistic galvanometer and the deflection theta naught obtained in it so this deflection we call it first row of the ballistic galvanometer this first row of the ballistic galvanometer we call it theta naught that is the current goes and there is a deflection first deflection occurs in the spot in that lamp scale arrangement so when that happens the first throw which is of charge i call it theta naught is linked with charge by this expression so first throw of a ballistic galvanometer is a measure of charge that has passed through it more is the charge more will be the deflection that is also very much clear from equation six and seven before winding up i would also like to tell you about this charge sensitivity and current sensitivity of a ballistic galvanometer so let us have a look they are very simple definitions for example what is current sensitivity of a moving coil galvanometer mirror galvanometer so it is the current that is required to produce a deflection of one millimeter on a scale kept at a distance of one meter from the mirror so let us go to this figure so this is our figure so here current that is required to produce a deflection of one millimeter on a scale kept at a distance of one meter from the mirror so this is your scale from the mirror of the ballistic galvanometer it is ballistic galvanometer or maybe whatever moving coil d arson well type so here you have this scale placed at a distance of one meter from the mirror and how much current that is required to produce a deflection of one millimeter this is the position okay i will show you with this highlighter so this is the position normal 
position of your spot under no deflection so suppose it comes here and a deflection by one millimeter how much is the current required for that to happen that is known as current sensitivity so it is measured in micro ampere per millimeter so it is clear that by using a small current if you are getting a large deflection then current sensitivity is higher likewise you can have voltage sensitivity so voltage sensitivity will be the potential difference that should be applied to the galvanometer to produce a deflection of one millimeter on a scale at a distance of one meter just like the previous case but here you will measure the potential difference which can produce a deflection of one millimeter at a dis scale at one meter distance so it is measured in terms of microvolt per millimeter next thing is your charge sensitivity so it is the charge which goes through the coil and it produces a throw of one millimeter on a scale based at the distance of one meter from the mirror so this is charge sensitivity charge sensitivity is simply q by theta naught where q is the charge and theta naught is the first throw here i would like to tell you is that this theta naught is actually equal to theta 1 1 plus lambda by 2 here lambda is lamping correction term so our theta naught which is the throw in absence of damping but this throw becomes theta 1 when damping arrives but we'll discuss this theta naught equals to theta 1 into 1 plus lambda by 2 in the next lecture of the differential equation of ballistic galvanometer for the time being your charge sensitivity is simply that constant k t by 2 pi c by n v now how will you link charge sensitivity and current sensitivity they also ask you in examination so let us see that when you have a steady deflection theta naught then from this steady deflection theta naught you have c theta naught equals to n i a b suppose theta naught is the deflection which occurs due to phases of a steady current i in the ballistic galvanometer as i already mentioned you can use that ballistic galvanometer for critically damped or dead bit condition also under such situation the deflection will come in terms of current you will apply a steady current it will give you a steady deflection so your c theta naught will be equal to ni ab when you have that dead bit situation in this ballistic galvanometer so c theta naught will be niab i by theta naught will be equal to c by nab but i by theta naught is current sensitivity current by deflection so you multiply by t by 2 pi on both sides this is t by 2 pi this is t by 2 pi t by 2 pi i by theta naught t by 2 pi c by n a b but t by 2 pi into c by n a b is can be written as charge sensitivity let me show you that so you will see that our t by 2 pi c by n b a t by t by 2 pi c by n b a this quantity is your charge sensitivity this quantity is your charge sensitivity but your c by n a b is your current sensitivity 
so that is clear that charge sensitivity will be equal to t by 2 pi into current sensitivity so this is what was intended for today's lecture so what we learned in today's lecture let me quickly tell you about that today we started with theory of moving coil galvanometer ballistic galvanometer in fact so we introduced you to the mechanism in which the different galvanometers are used in for different measurements then we talked about theory of moving coil ballistic galvanometer we also gave you the definitions of current sensitivity voltage sensitivity and charge sensitivity in the next lecture which will be coming up we will be discussing this one just i am going to show a little here we are going to get equation of motion of the moving system in ballistic galvanometer we'll set up a differential equation and using that differential equation we'll derive all those conditions which we told you verbally the conditions for a moving coil galvanometer to be deadbeat the condition for which a moving coil galvanometer becomes a becomes critically damped the condition in which it behaves as ballistic all these conditions we are going to get directly by solving the differential equation of motion of the ballistic galvanometer coil thank you